previously on Sailing Rum Punch. After four months away, and I promise we were working, we were back to the UK, bundled up and reunited with our boat. We have rented a small unit. So this is our storage unit. Whilst not originally our plan, we decided to start renting a small unit to turn into a workshop, giving us that extra bit of space. We also needed to get the engine out. This is our engine. It's a Yamaha 3HM35. We spoke to an engineer. Ben made an engine stand. Wood. This needs to be completely empty. And then we began the process for disconnecting the engine. It's a very chilly April morning, but today is the day we are disconnecting the engine. Ellie, how do you feel about that? I'm thinking where the hell is spring? I just prepped outside in the cockpit and as I did so, a huge black cloud rolled over and rain has stopped play for the time being. So I'm just going to use this time to go through our list of everything we need to do today so that when the rain stops, we can hit it hard. I know the rain shouldn't really stop us, but it just makes for a really miserable day. It's quite cold outside to be wet and it's really windy, so the chill factor is just too high. And if you're doing a rubbish job anyway, you might as well try and make it as comfortable as possible. Number one! <laughs> we should do a wrap, like a Hamilton style. Oh my god, yes! Yeah. Number ten, disconnect! <laughs> Okay, so step one, I'm going to drain the fluids. We're going to start with draining the cooling water. I'm going to give that a little twist. I know it's really corroded and stiff, so I'm going to use some pliers to help me do that. That water should come out of a little tube at the bottom, so I've got a little bucket standing by to do that. Once we've done the cooling water, we'll move on to the oil. Oh. Okay. There's supposed to be water in there. I see water comes through this tube here. I undid the cooling water valve, no water came out. Now, it could be that it's all seized up so it's not letting the water out, or there might just not be any water in there. But for now, we'll leave that and move on. So next, I'm gonna to attempt to drain the oil. Now, I know the engine is cold, so the oil is gonna be very sludgy, but I'm gonna try my best to suck out the oil through the dipstick hole using this pump. I know once the engine's out, we can just undo the cap at the bottom of the sump and all the oil will pour out that way. That will be the easier way and we'll probably end up doing that. But as the engine is full of oil at the moment, I want to try and get as much out as possible just so it's a little bit lighter for us to lift. See how much oil is in here. I can't see the hole. Let's try and get some of that out, shall we? This is going really well so far. It might just be really cold. So far, we haven't been able to strain the cooling water and we haven't been able to strain the oil. But that's okay. What's next on the list? <laughs> what did you find out? So we think the oil is too cold to come up with the pump. Uh, it's absolutely fine. We knew that could be a situation that we'd be in. So I'm just going to clean up now and we're going to move on. Hopefully now we can start disconnecting hoses and things. It would be a lot easier. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> we have to be so now we're moving on to the remote cable. I'm going to do the clutch cable here. Hopefully it's, I'm just going to undo the split pin and poke it out. It should be that simple. That worked. Really? Okay, so let's take that off. 
This is why we're giving ourselves a week to do this. What have you found? So, the screws to get the clutch cable remote off, uh, there's not enough space between the side of the engine compartment and the actual screws to fit a screwdriver in. I've only got this much space. Um, I can't fit a screwdriver in there, so what I'm going to do is release these bolts here and hopefully take this whole unit off and then take the screws out and then put this back on. Smart! Yikes. Next we're going to go on to the engine stop cable. Where is that? So that is this one here. So okay. what we're going to do, I'm just going to release this, I'm going to release that, and then hopefully this should just all come out. So far I've disconnected the clutch cable. This cable means that we can get revs from the engine without putting it in gear. So all we do is push the button in the middle of the control lever and gives us the revs without moving us forward. Uh, I've also got the engine stop cable, that is just what it says on the tin. You pull a lever, engine off. <laughs> That's the action, you see. You pull it up like that. That's rude. Engine off. That's rude. Tick, tick! What was that you just pulled out? This was the throttle cable. Ooh. That's what drives the boat forward and backwards. Is that the speed cable? Yes, the speed cable. That's it. Not the deep compression cable? No, we don't have one of those. So at this point, if you do have a decompression cable, it'd be attached to here. Oh, shut up when it suddenly got really dark outside and in here, so Ben's had to put the floodlights on. But it was so sunny this morning. It was still five degrees, but it was still sunny this morning. A really nice walk to the boat. And then like in, two minutes it's just become classic British weather. I believe we're now moving on to the electric wiring. I just removed the alternator. Now it's not necessary for getting the engine out. The wiring for it's on the other side and I just couldn't see to get to it and I wanted to be document where everything goes. I don't know if we will continue using this alternator, but just in case I'm labeling absolutely everything, so if it does end up going back in, we can just pop it back in and hopefully have no issues. Next, we've got this oil temperature. Oh gosh, oopsie. That snapped off. Well, that's going to be a fun little doozy for another day. Water temperature. Next, we're moving on to the starter motor. Let's see what we have here. Wow, what an absolute cluster mess that is. The main battery negative coming off. The battery's taken off the boat a long time ago, so I don't need to worry. Normally I do this first, but I'm doing it now because there's nothing, nothing attached to the end. And then the tack. Okay. I'm gonna take taco. taco. I love tacos. I'm hoping the taco just pulls out. Oh, there we go, that was easy. Calling in the big guns for this guy. Lovely. The boat is shaking. It's, it's shaking, it's like, I mean, you can hear the wind, it's absolutely madness. I'm like genuinely quite scared <laughs> this boat's gonna keel over. And we're not even in the bloody water. I see it moving. I've done all I can do for today. It is raining so hard outside, I was getting absolutely wet and it is freezing cold. So we're just gonna call it a day. I thought I might not get through it all today, it would have been nice, but we've still got the water hoses and the fuel hoses to disconnect before we move on to the feet, which are going to be a nightmare in themselves, but we're in a good place. Um, we've got about six days until the engine gets hauled out, so we've got plenty of time to 
problem solved, how we get on. Uh, but for now, we just can't continue with this weather, so we're going to call it a day. We're going to pack up the boat and we're going to head back and probably go to the cinema. <laughs> oh my God, it's so wet. Join us in two weeks for part two.